Hey, welcome back and today we worked in the garden a little bit in between batteries going dead running out of gasoline for the tiller going and picking grandchildren up watching grandchildren swim mowing watching grandchildren swim some more we got a little bit of work done not a lot but a little bit but we're going to take a gander at what we got done see what's coming up and see how it's going along in the 30 by 30 and the other spot we got planted so here we go all right well we've got our first signs of potatoes coming up well a little bit more than first signs and they're coming up pretty good throughout the row we got to get over here and heal them up some more though we did get some of the fencing up for the green beans to run on and they're looking pretty good if you can already tell on some of them we're starting to get some runners on them we gotta hurry up and get these fenced because they will be putting it on here the next couple of days. So we got one section of fence left to do. And I have got to get over here and thin out some zucchini plants. Look at that bundle. We've got tomato plants that have got over a foot tall now. Here's some of them. We run the wire today to tie them up on and uh, I just didn't have a kettle panel piece four foot long, so we just run a piece of wire up there. Cucumbers that we have definitely got to thin out because they are four to a hole on that hill. Pretty much the same way on this one. Yeah, we have got to thin these guys out this week. We got some sweet potato shoots over there. And the cabbage, looking good, looking good. We do have some, uh, looks like bug activity on the leaves, but I haven't seen anything on them, so I don't know if they're just ripping on their own, tearing from the heat. But I don't see anything chewing on them. I haven't been able to find anything anyway. Some more zucchini plants. Go over and check out this. <coughs> now, last week we had a squirrel issue with the corn. However, I set a small live trap up up in that corner and we're going to walk by there. And I'll show you the size to buy for squirrels. It's pretty simple, easy to find. Tractor supplies, place like that's got them. And the chocolate mint is really exploding. Damn it. We got some watermelons coming up. We got cantaloupe coming up really well. Now I've got some hills of watermelon that haven't germinated yet and broke ground. If I do not see any in the next couple, probably about another week. I'll uh, just tear the, the top of the mound off and we'll replant. It happens. Watermelon seeds sometimes are really difficult to get to germinate. The electric fence is on. And I put, you can see from the corners, I've got, there's one corner and I got a piece of fence run right along, then back in, then high up and then over to the next side where the live trap is over next to the woods. The reason for that is when a deer jumps the first strand, uh, they can't transition into another jump that soon. So they'll usually bump into the second piece of wire you've got electrified and it spooks them and they'll take off again. That's a good thing because I hate plant stuff and deer eating it up. Now these are uh, Parks Whopper right here. Pretty good sized tomato coming up. 
better bush. Man, these are some lovely, lovely tomato plants. Looking good. I didn't prune any off of these. I don't believe much in doing that. I just let, let them grow. And as you can tell, see that limb dying right there? Why well, prune it? It's going to prune itself. And if the squirrels had not gotten into the corn, this is what we would have been looking at all through the garden. But we lost a whole row and a half of another one. And I have since replanted, so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Here's some more potatoes that we've got in the ground coming up. These are the ones that I will dig through the season up until right here, this spot. And then past that spot, I plant them pretty heavy. So we should be doing good. Yeah, we've really got to get over here and thin out some of these plants. These cucumber plants are really putting it on. <coughs> Looking good though. There is the live trap. And what I've got in there is peanut butter and corn and a secret ingredient I'm not going to talk about right now. But uh, I have caught several squirrels in this in the past couple seasons. So usually when I set this out, it deters them from coming back in here. I don't know why, but once I start trapping, they start leaving. Some more uh, zucchini plants are there. You can actually see the seed hole. More zucchini. We grill a lot of zucchini during the summertime. That is crookneck squash right there. And it's all looking good. Can't be more pleased with it. If I can just keep the critters out of it, we'll be doing good. So this right here went from that to this this year. I'm fixing to call it a night because I'm getting eat up with mosquitoes. Oh, one other thing I want to touch on before we leave here. I am going to do some gardening myths, like fairy tales that people put out here on the wide world of web lies. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I actually... But anyhow, we had a gentleman come by a couple of days ago, and uh, he was telling me how to plant tomatoes. I, you know, I'm all game for that. I am more than willing to listen to a person. Let me grab my fence right here. But, uh, he started talking about Epsom salt. And the first thing I asked him was, why would you put Epsom salt in your tomato holes? What well, makes them grow better? No, it don't. Makes the tomatoes bigger. No, it don't. Stops things from rotting. Blossom rot. No, it don't. <laughs> it's man-made. It's a man-made product. Magnesium and sulfur and water. If you look at the nutrients level like you do most fertilizers, it's zero, zero, zero. <laughs> and you're going to have these gardeners come out here and say, well, my granddaddy did it. He had the best tomato crop ever. Yeah, I probably agree your granddaddy did have a good tomato crop, but he probably used fertilizer on it too. Epsom salt does not help. Uh, very few grounds have dirt, has a magnesium deficiency, unless it's real sandy and a lot of water moves through it. As you're wasting your time. Don't, you know, don't get me going on the Epsom salt stuff, but trust me. Trust me on this one, please, for the love of Pete. Epsom salt does not make anything grow any better. Uh, one reason why your tomatoes get rots is because a lot of times it's a calcium deficiency. You know, put a little bit of lime on it. I like uh, pelletized lime, 
little granules of fertilizer is what it looks like. But uh, not Epsom salt. That's for a bath or when your feet hurt. Not for growing tomatoes. <laughs> but anyway, I'm out of here for the afternoon or evening. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit like, leave us a comment. I really do try to get back on the answers in a timely manner, but sometimes due to work or issues at home, I kind of get sidetracked and I don't get the answer, but I promise within a day's time, I'll give you something back on it. Could be wrong, but I'll give you something. So anyhow, we're going to call it a night. I'm going to go in here to a glass of ice cold sweet tea, a recliner, and the grandkids. So until next time, I wish you all the best luck. Get your plants, let's get them in the ground. Time to garden. Y'all have a great one. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>